Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me call this meeting to order. This is the January meeting for the Valley Lowndes County Zoning Board of Appeals. For those of you that maybe have never been to one of our meetings, let me explain how we operate so you can keep up with us. <coughs> I will call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lectern and give us the meat of the case as it, as it, as it has been requested. There will probably be questions and or discussion between staff and the board or among the board members. Once we are satisfied, we understand what has been presented at that point, and I will ask if there is anyone here on the applicant's side that would like to give us any additional information. If so, please come to the lectern and give us your name and address for the record and give us the information that you want us to take under advisement. When you have made your presentation or as you're making your presentation, there is possibility of questions and discussions back and forth among members of the board to you. Once we are satisfied that we have heard what you have to offer or want to put in evidence or on the record, then I would ask if there are other persons here that would like to speak on behalf. We do ask that if there are multiple people wanting to speak on behalf of it, if you have information that has not been brought to us already in the meeting, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and give us the information you would like us to take under advisement. If the information that you want us to take under advisement has been presented, we request in the interest, interest of time that you not give us the same thing two or three or four times. Once we have heard the pro side, then I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition or if any persons here have questions about what is being requested. If so, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and give us the information you would like for us to take under advisement on the other side or ask the questions that you may have. Please give us the information as fully as you can the first time, again, because we have a couple of cases and a couple of them could be long. We don't want to string it out any more than we have to. Uh, please give us the information you want us to take in the first time if possible so that we don't have rebuttal and re-rebuttal back and forth. Uh, that's not to say that we will not entertain a rebuttal or re-rebuttal, but we'd like to try to get it all in the first time. Once we have heard from both sides and we think we understand the case, normally a decision will be rendered here today. However, the rules and bylaws that we operate under allow us to table a case or postpone action on a case until the next regularly scheduled meeting, if we feel like information is lacking or parties need to try to talk to resolve issues. Okay, after saying that, if you have not signed in on the back table, please sign in on the back table so we have a record of your attendance here at the meeting. The first case we'll call is Lowndes County case VAR 2015-15. This is Clifford Lucas, Arnie Lucas, and Lawrence Lucas, DBA Lucas Brothers Memorial Garden. Ms. Carmella, you have the stage. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Our first case before you tonight, or this afternoon, is a case that was tabled from your December meeting. Um, essentially, the board tabled the case in order that the applicant tried to um, talk with some of the neighbors to get some of the concerns that they had um, settled. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with the applicants last week um, and what you have before you is a revised site plan. Um, essentially the thing that has changed the site plan is that they added a second entrance into um, the cemetery. So basically the applicant is requesting variances to our supplemental standards. Cemeteries are allowed in the RA zoning district. The crux of the property is on RA. However, they are having trouble meeting some of the standards. There are four. Um, the first standard is that of access. We require all cemeteries to be accessed from an arterial or collector 
road system, collect the road system such as your Valdale Road, Slippery Road, Shallow Roads, your more busier roads. Um, that's the first variance. Lucas Richardson Road happens to be classified as a local road. It's an 80 foot right of way, but it's classified as a local road on our therapeutic plan. The second variance is that to the minimum land area. We require cemeteries to be located on a minimum of 10 acres. Subject property is um, a little over five acres. Um, so they're requesting a variance of five acres. The third variance is that of minimum road frontage. We require cemeteries to have a minimum width on the road of 200 feet. The applicants are proposing a minimum width of 150 feet. So a variance of 50 feet is being requested. And lastly, they're requesting a variance to our buffer standards to require um, cemeteries to have a 30-foot vegetative buffer where they have any residentially zoned property or agriculturally zoned property. The applicants was proposing a 15-foot buffer. Um, staff is recommending that, that they at least um, create a 20-foot buffer because that's the setback, you know, that a plot has to be from a property line. Um, I took this back to the TRC staff. Um, the recommendation still remains that of approval with the exception of that buffer yard. Instead of a 30-foot buffer, TRC is recommending um, a 20-foot buffer. So I'll leave you to answer any questions. I did have an opportunity to talk with the applicants to see if they had an opportunity to talk with some of the um, neighboring properties, and they're here today, um, and they can answer that question for you. I have a question about the state requirement for 10 acres. Um, if there's a state requirement for 10 acres, how can we give a variance to that? They also require them to get local approval. And the local approval, if you all grant the variance, that's considered an approval by the local government. So it's not really required, it's the state recommendation. It's a requirement. Um, whether the state has a variance process or a commission board that they can apply, I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. So if we grant the five plus acre instead of 10, mm -hmm. do they still have to go to the state? Yes, sir. They're, they're okay. Yes, sir. Actually, um, there is a form that the state um, requires the local government to sign off on the zoning office. And if you all approve the variance, I plan to note that on that certification form. But yes, they do have to sat still satisfy the state requirement, which is beyond us.
a thought to, or why were they wanting a variance on the side buffers to 15 seconds? Just to have more land to put more graves. And there is an existing fence. I believe there's a chain link fence already around the property. They really didn't want to miss that. But essentially, to get more more grave sites. Yeah, that, that may be a question we need to address to them if they, uh, if the applicant comes back with me. Yes. Why did you say that this road was paved like that of a collector as opposed to a local road that it is? It has a lot to do with the funding when they improved Lewis Richardson Road in order to receive the state funding. Um, they had to make it that wide, but it's still, you know, it's classified as a uh, local, local road because it doesn't connect any major thoroughfare. So if this pro so if this road, if this project had not received state money, it would still be just a local road with local road um what's the word right away. Yes. And we wouldn't be here. Right. Any other questions, any other discussion? Thank you, Carmel. Is there anyone here from Lucas Brothers Memorial who would like to give us any additional information? Yes. Good evening. Uh, I'm Pastor Arnie Lucas from Jesus Christ by Faith Ministries. And uh, I live on 4427 Valdez Road. And we are here trying to get a variance to certain conditions that the county requires on this grave site. This graveyard has been in existence for better than 10 years, and we have at least five to six graves already in the site. But we are trying to get a variance to eliminate some of the conditions that this county requires. And, uh, and I appreciate it if you all would consider making the decision on other graves that's in the county, like the <coughs> Riverside Graveyard, the Paul Barrett's Graveyard on Riverside Drive, and there's another one that I've served on Beck Street. And all those graves, all those cemeteries is on very small roads. Some of them is only two block long dirt roads. And, uh, in their graveyards there and their graves. So I would appreciate it if you all would consider other graves in the county and what they look like compared to Lucas Brothers graveyard. Okay, so give me one second. Sir, I need your name and address for the record, please, since you're up here. Uh, Clifford Lucas, 4760 Valdale Road. Hey, how? Thank you. I think, uh, Ms. Carmel, I spoke about the distance, the road, as, as far as access and, and traffic. Uh, we do have two entrances, which was not mentioned the last time. We have two gates. It didn't show a uh, second road, and that's what we did. We had to survey it, uh, show that uh, uh, there are two entrances. Uh, or rather one entrance and an extra uh, gate and driveway for an exit. So as far as I know, uh, last time there were con some concerns about the amount of cars. I'm sure if you look at the, the uh, site and with the two entrances and the circle of, of uh, the driveway, you'll find that it certainly can accommodate up to close to 100 different cars in that area. Uh, second, uh, we put the in second entrance there because uh, with the uh, metal, the iron gate on the front, 
we can't get utilities in there to dig graves. So uh, that was there to start with. Uh, <clears throat> one thing um, as far as um, access is concerned is when we started this cemetery, all these regulations were not in place. I don't believe that. Um, and that's my understanding. So if they had been, we probably would have done it a little differently. But um, at the time, as far as we understood, these regulations did not exist. So what we are doing now is trying to comply as best we can with the regulations that has been put in place. And uh, under the uh, <coughs> LU, uh, LDC, uh, under requirements, it says <coughs> a variance may be granted upon a finding by the ZBA that one of the following conditions has been met. A, there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property in question because of size, shape, or topography. Yes, um, we're, we're familiar with the exception. Right, okay. So uh, I just want to emphasize that the graveyard is there. It's not going any place uh, in the course. Uh, we just want to comply. Um, their friends, their family, and their friends, their parents now, and they will be. So we just want to come back with the uh, ULDC. Yeah, the uh, yeah, ULDC was uh, voted in after the cemetery was already there. Mm -hmm. So as long as you had maintained what you were doing at that time, it was grandfathered in as a family type cemetery. Yes. Yes. But as soon as you started making it a commercial establishment kind of a cemetery, that's when it triggered the compliance requirements. Yes. Well, it's, we, we started making it, I'm sorry. We, when we when we started the graveyard, in fact, this even before the graveyard started, we formed the uh, uh, LLC to as a commercial cemetery. It's Lucas Brothers a Memorial Guard LLC. This was done before we even started, so uh, the intent was always there. Uh, it's not that it was a second thought, but. Yes, sir. I, I understand, but you're, you're still faced with the same situation. You are changing what the county understood and that no longer fits in the ULDC. Now, that's not to say that it can't be done. If these variances are allowed, then it can be done. But we still have to determine how much of these variances we, the, the board, will accept or what we would recommend. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Is there anyone else here in support that would like to? So Trina had a question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think Carmela answered the question as to why you were requesting the side buffer variant. Mm -hmm. And was it just so that you could have room for additional graveside right. graves? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions at this time? Anyone else here would like to speak on behalf and bring us any additional information? Is there anyone here in opposition or has questions about what is being requested? Please take the lectern. Give me your name and address for the record. My name is Willie Flowers. My address is 3710 Richardson Road. We have a house on that road and also
also we have to talk with you on that road. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend Mr. Arnie Lucas, Mr. Lawrence Lucas, and Mr. Clifford Lucas for having a family cemetery on that property. Uh, first of all, we all want to lay our heads somewhere. We are opposed to the fact of changing that family cemetery into a commercial uh, public cemetery. Uh, when you look at it, if it's possible, can they bring the, the diagram of the plat up? Not that one that shows with the club plane and everything. May I post the screen? Yes. This is the property. From this point to this point, it's five acres. It's five acres. All right. Now, a point was mentioned that they did not want to take the fence down. I have some pictures here. This picture was taken from Google Earth. This is the actual cemetery that they're talking about. The cemetery that is existing right now is, comes about right there. This is the cemetery. All of this property right in here is not being used. This is a, 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 from Google Earth showing the actual cemetery itself. They have a chain link fence. And probably, we're not even talking about five acres. When you consider where the chain link fence is, you're probably talking about two and a half acres to three acres for a cemetery. And they're talking about putting 1,200 to 1,500 bodies in a two to three acre cemetery. Then, I just heard, and, and, and foremost, the rationale behind this was to gain money to maintain the cemetery. We have Mr. Jonathan Lucas, he's the owner of Lucas Landscaping. And I spoke to him and he said he don't have a problem trying to maintain the cemetery because it's a family cemetery. That's our heritage. So trying to open it up for public funds to maintain the property, I mean, he's got, he said he don't mind doing that there. Also, when you look at the, the, the property that's being used, I also took some more pictures. Do you want me to pass this around to you? Yeah, look at it in the bathroom right there. You can see the boundary lines of where the actual cemetery is. I just heard Mr. I think Arnie Lucas state that they could get a hundred cars in that two and a half to three acre lot. It's impossible. You're not going to do that there. Plus, have a cemetery up in there. I mean, when you look at the pad that they have there, by the time you get to Hearst and you get some. Uh, uh, the, 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 the vehicles that go along with the funeral, you're going to be on the way to the gate. So, I, I mean, that is not uh, reasonable. These are some pictures that were taken of the actual cemetery itself. And I can pass these around also. Now, from my understanding, I, I heard them say that there was a second entrance. Well, the second entrance is drawn on here, and they say there's two gates. Well, so I'm not sure where the other gate is. Well, I, I don't know where the other gate is either, because, I mean, I've never seen another gate unless they plan on putting another gate there. All right. Now, there's, there, there's two gates, and as they're talking about right here, there's two gates here, and there's a passenger gate on the side. Now, they're talking about that, I mean, but as far as another entrance, there is no other entrance other than this double gate, unless they plan on adding 
another entrance to it. Yeah. If, if the zoning board were to grant the variance and make it a stipulation that they had to have a second entrance per the second drawing, then that's what they would have to do. Okay. Is it possible for us to see? Do we know where that entrance is going to be located? Here's now, now close. Yes. Here is the original showing the one entrance. What they have done is they have taken out that row of grave right there and put the road coming back off of here back out. But then still we're not talking about five acres of property. We're talking about two and a half to three acres. Because if people go back to that 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 chat again. When you look at this lower section <laughs> now, this lower section is about as big as the top section up here. When you're talking about five acres, we are opposed to it being a commercial. Cemetery. I understand. We don't want that. As far as it being two and a half acres versus five acres, if they have five acres in deeded property, then we're dealing with five acres. Mm -hmm. We understand that roughly half of it is not usable, but because they have five acres in total, we're still dealing with five as far as that versus the ten, which they still have to go to the state. From, from there, even if this is granted on our, on our part. All right. And also, there was an issue that was brought up at the last meeting as far as, as, far as parking. Uh, from my understanding, and I'm pretty sure that y'all are familiar with this, is they cannot park on the right of way. They have to provide parking within the cemetery itself for parking. So any parking on the right of way, that is prohibited. I don't know what that's. Is, is that what it says? Okay, well, in that case, if they park on the right of way, then technically it is not allowed. However, if they choose to park on the right of way, there's nothing that ZGOA can do. That would be the case. Somebody would have to notify enforcement, whether it is the Lowndes County Sheriff's Department or code enforcement. But that's that's beyond our, I'm saying. our you know, we, we we can't regulate that. We can't enforce it. I understand. So uh, we are opposed to this here. Um, we want it to stay a family cemetery. Uh, I mean, that's what it was designed for. It was not designed for a commercial public cemetery. Thank you. Okay. Before you leave, any questions, any discussion? Is there anyone else would like to speak in opposition or have or they have questions regarding the situation? Good afternoon. My name is Alshonda Mayfield and I'm a resident of the Lucas Road as well. Um, I'm going to get your address, please. Yes, it's 3520 Lucas Richardson Road. Thank you. And I'm speaking on behalf of my mother as well. Her address is 3538, she's right here. Um, and of course, I am in opposition of the cemetery being open to the public on our road because we it's a quiet neighborhood, very family oriented, um, and to have that additional amount of traffic coming in, we're really against. Um, also, I heard the question asked earlier about why it is an 80 foot right way or why it's an 80 foot road. Um, and when the road was built, I was a teenager, and I remember my grandmother and my father, as well as um, Cousin Shell and Miss Lucas, his father as well, um, allowing more land to be taken from their property to make the road wider for agricultural purposes. Um, so tractors, combines can easily go from one field to another. Um, in fact, my grandmother's yard, she lost half of it as a result of the road being built. So um, in reference to that question, it was for agricultural reasons. And also to hopefully keep the property in hands of family to be passed from generation to generation, as my mother, as well as so many of our other relatives have done for their posterity. All right. Anything else? Any questions? Any discussions? Just 
We have petitions. We have some petitions, and it's the majority of the vote. We're not supposed to be taking the census. We, we, we ran into that several, several years ago, and it was stated that we, we, we should not be doing that. Well, can I address your question at all? Yes. Well, there are 27 homes on the road, 25 of which um, there are people living in that are being resided in. And almost all of those, at least 20, have signed this petition saying they do not want the cemetery open. And I can give you a copy of the petition okay. here. We can make the petition part of the minutes. Okay. Is that part of and that folder also includes our petition from these properties, the Nelson Hill Estates. Um, the majority of their residents signed the petition as well, requesting that that extra traffic does not come into our area with the result of that commercial cemetery being opened. So the second part, the second set of pages are from the residents of Nelson Hill. I don't know that that petition relevant to it. Uh, um, I guess we could make it part of the minutes, but they are not adjacent. Well, their concern was that um, added amount of traffic because Valdell Road is even narrower than our road. I mean, if a procession is coming through, there's no way for them to pull off because the ditches are so deep. Any other questions? I have a petition been updated since the last time we brought it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There are additional signatures and then the Nelson Hill Estate signatures as well. Any other questions, discussions? There are over 100 in there. Is there anyone else here in opposition that would like to speak to the U.S. information we don't already have? Yes, ma'am. Please come to the lecture and give me your name and address. My name is Carolyn Fluker, Carolyn Lucas Fluker. I'm one of ten children born to Edward Jack Lucas, who has property on the Lucas Richardson Road. My father has ten children. He willed his ten children his share. They say it wasn't a family cemetery. It was designed as a family cemetery. My grandfather died in 1958, I think it was, 59, I was 11 years old. And he gave 19.5 acres to his 10 boys and two girls, four girls. All of that property on the Lucas Richardson Road was inherited property. And my aunt, Orabel Lucas Reynolds, gave those five acres of land as a family cemetery. She was generous to do that. And we all knew it was a family cemetery. I just heard about it, so I wanted, I, my concern is that it was established as a family cemetery, and I would like to see it continued as a family cemetery. I'm a funeral director, wife. 47 years and I would like to see that cemetery remain as a Lucas cemetery we have that's all I want to say thank you ma'am any questions any discussion yeah. Mr. Chairman we need the street address please the street address for Waycross Georgia 705 Arnold McKinney Drive Waycross Georgia 31501 Thank you. I own property on the Lucas Richardson Road. Thank you. Yes, sir. How are you, doing, sir? Um, my name is Terry Lucas. I grew up here in Lyons County. I uh, was school here from Big Heart Elementary to Lyons County High School, where I lived here in 1978. And my father is Audrey uh, Lucas, senior. And uh, I don't live here, but my relatives, siblings, and the grandchildren want me to speak for them today who are having hurt this property also. Uh, our father farmed here in all of his entire life. He invested his life in Knox County. My dad lived in Knox County. 
But we're, we're as descendants of Ivory, Lucas Sr., heirs of properties on Lucas Richardson Road, we oppose the release of a zone of requirements that are being requested by the following parties, Arnie Lucas, Clifford Lucas, and Lawrence Lucas. We don't have anything against them personally, <coughs> but we want to remain what the original intentions were. The above parties are requesting you, the leaders of Lawrence County Zoning Board, to grant a release from the following requirements, as we, as we discussed, access road requirements, commercial cemetery from 10 acres to five acres, where there's a flood zone, zero yard, you know, front frontage requirements from 200 feet to 150 feet, the buffer zone release requirements being released here. We're asking you, we're appealing to you as leaders in this county to say no, because our family is saying no. We don't have anything against Arnie or Clifford, but we don't want a public commercial cemetery on our road. We care about the next generation. We're excited about my dad when he died. He was excited about passing on his legacy to his children and his grandchildren. Those were his words when he was suffering from cancer. Dad, he said, make sure you take care of this for the next generation. He said, this is what I've worked for. And that's why we're here today, sir. That's why we're appealing to you, ma'am. Because we don't want to lose our legacy just like each of you have a legacy in Lawrence County. I don't live here. But my legacy is here. I come here often because my roots are here. This is where I was raised. This is where I was, I was educated. And we're asking you, in closing, uh, all the younger generations of uh, generation representing the future of Lyons County, where we are, have a vested interest in success and the value of the properties in Lyons County, Georgia. We believe a commercial public cemetery would be valued the residential properties and the farm properties on Lucas Richardson Road. Sir, also, Madam, we believe that the commercial public cemetery will increase crime in our areas where people come in up and down the road. There's no one supervising it. There's no one watching it up and down the road, down a country dirt, a country road that is a dead end road. It deads in, that road dead end. There's farm properties that are isolated. It's an isolated cemetery. Please do not grant. Please, we are coming to you, as leaders. Please, don't grant. Don't grant our uncles. Don't grant our uncles. I don't have anything against them. They've done well in life. We're proud of them, happy for them. But we're asking you, don't grant them this request to release them from the requirements that the state has and the county has. So we appeal to you as leaders of this board and leaders in this county to say no to them. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else would like to speak? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think you heard it. Do we need to talk about it? Any discussions? Any questions? Mr. Chairman, I did, um, for the record, receive a letter from the Mr. Rogers. Okay, and to possibly start some discussion, keep in mind that we are dealing with four variances, and any one of the four, if it is not granted in some fashion, then the whole thing stops. Three of the four will not make it happen. Two of the four will not make it happen. It takes four of the four to make it happen. And just for the audience's sake, also keep in mind, even should ZBOA allow four variances in some fashion, they still have got to meet state or get variance from the state, which may or may not be the time. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Any other questions? Can I entertain a motion on, I guess, all four of them at one time? Because <coughs> if we don't get all four of them, then we're moving in. Or a motion to deny. Huh? Or a motion to deny. A motion of any kind. Of any kind. I just I, was I, saying, I was just saying that 
if you make a motion in positive in some form, then we're talking about all four, unless the board wants to try to argue them of one at a time, but then we're still back to the same thing. If they don't get all four, it's a denial in effect. Well, I, I like to make a motion <clears throat> that we uh, that we either grant one or two, and they have to meet up the requirements for the state for the other. Well, that that is true. Now, if you if the board is so inclined to grant variance for one or two or three, the denial of the fourth means they would have to meet it in its entirety, whatever that is. I, I stand corrected. That that is another option, but that would become a point that they would then either accept and move on, or let it die because they don't want to meet the second or the third or fourth or whatever right. it is. Right, and that probably put it in their hands. I mean, those requirements, if if if, if they want to continue, <clears throat> if on. they want to continue, and after saying that, let me also say under the. Lowndes County Code, if they are denied, refresh my memory, there's still a one year, if one or more of the four variances is denied, then you either have to meet it in its entirety to proceed, or you have to wait 12 months before you can come back with the same request. <clears throat> my, my problem is with the road. That, that's the one I sort of can't get over. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm not good with having it on the local road. Yes. He really hasn't made the motion. It was more of a discussion. Would you like to make the motion? Yes. Okay, make your motion. I'd like to make a motion that we grant either one or two of the variance requests and the other two they will have to Hold on. You, you got to make the motion. I make the motion that we grant one, we grant three, we deny two, we deny four. Okay. Make your motion in that format. Okay. It's specific variance is at its list. A specific Not variance. one variance, right. but which variance. Okay. All right. I'll tell you, which, which, which ones would you like to vote for or make a motion for? Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, to give uh, to approve the variance request for the, the setback. And um, as far as the other three, they have to satisfy with the state and, and the county to be right. So you're you're saying you're gonna make a motion to grant them the variance for number four, which is the buffer, which is the setback. Yes. At what footage? At 150 feet. No, no, no that's, that's, the, that's the access. Was that the access? Okay, so you're voting 
to deny one, two, and three, and grant four at 15 feet. Yes, just given, given how many people is here and listening to what the opposition, the proposition was, I mean, I, I mean personally, I deem mean, that as being fair. Okay. I have a motion on the floor to grant. I'm sorry, I'm going to start with the top one. He's going to deny access. He's going to deny minimum land. He's going to deny minimum road frontage. And he is granting the variance for number four at 15 feet. Okay, I have motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. And I get another motion. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. I recommend that we deny this all four of these uh, variances. Based on further discussion that I've had a chance to go out there and I've seen exclusive homes all the way down to that property that's in question here. And I have to put myself in the president's shoes and realize that I would want my neighborhood, although it's a, it's a free enterprise situation here, but I think there's moral issues also involved. And if the two individuals who are requesting uh, these variances do not live on the property or live within that area, <coughs> and I think those two individuals will have to put family first. That's my opinion. So therefore, I make a motion that this very these variances Okay. I have motion on the floor, Dr. Powell, to deny all four, one, two, three, and four. And I have second anybody. Everybody in favor, please raise a hand and hold it. All opposed? is 5-1 to deny all four variants. Gentlemen, I'm sorry. See if you can do something else. I'll be waiting for the Proud to thank you. Okay, next case we'll call in Lowndes County case VAR 2015-16, Jeff Lovell for the City of Alabaster.
property is adjacent to residential rezone property, which is a property to the north. Um, you're required to provide an 80-foot buffer, and within that 80-foot, you have to plant so many trees, so many shrubs. If you all look before you, I placed an aerial, so I can show you a close-up of what that existing vegetation. Um, so I, it just didn't make sense to us to, for the, well, first of all, let me back up. Within the buffer yard, you have to plant so many trees, so many shrubs. Um, in this case, that vegetation, that existing vegetation is very thick. And it didn't make sense to us for them to have to take down in order to plant shrubs. So staff is recommend, recommending that they keep their existing vegetation, leave it undisturbed. And I was very specific with the language there. Um, we did have these recommendations with some conditions. And we went back and modified the conditions based on the applicant's request. The condition previously read that any future buildings and or development will be um, served by Lowndes County Board and Tour. Well, we're amending that condition to say that if there are any subdivisions of this 75 acres, um, that they would have to connect to the county sewer system. Um, that looks the paper that's in front of you. But that's going to be within feet of the new Veloso wastewater treatment plant. Why would you send it all the way down to our land application site when it could just go there? If I understand the question, they want to treat their own sewer. Right. So the county sewer system is not near as nice as cities. Well, it's, it's far. It's pretty far away. And it just getting just practical. I think it's that talking about if it's subdivided. It says, yeah, it says any newly created lots in the subdivision process of this 75 acres outside the wastewater treatment plant operation will be served by Lowndes County Water and Sewer Services. That's ridiculous. Oh, I'm sorry. I appreciate that comment. <laughs> <laughs> That is our recommendation that any future subdivision, yeah, yes. And if they want a relief from that, they can come back before this board. 75 acres in our estimation is, that's a lot of property. That is a lot of property. There's a, quite a bit of development. In the case the city were to sell all the property, it would be developed as something else. Something else but, but, the amount of, but the amount of distance that wastewater would have to go from there to go to the Belmont. And that's and why, and that's why you can believe that requirement. I know that any action that this board takes does not create or set a precedent one way or the other. But at the same time, it gives the implication. So we don't want to imply that somebody else can come in at a later date and say, well, but I'm so far away. And that's why I don't want to dial it. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. No, um, that's not my can, can, you, can you, so we can say they don't, whoever builds on this property in the future if it's subdivided doesn't have to connect to Lowndes County. Sure. But we cannot say they have to connect to the city's Correct. sewer right there. They still have to connect to somebody, but it has to be the city one right there, not necessarily the county one. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, I think what you're saying is it's absurd to make them have to. It's absurd to make them have to connect so far, even though they still will need to connect. Well, there is a policy that you know, with this property being in unincorporated areas, the city couldn't serve them anyway without some type of formal agreement between the city and the county. Right. That, that's exactly. why I'm saying you couldn't. We can't say they don't have to connect to the county, but they do have to connect to the city, is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to understand and make sure that, yes, we can say that. No. It's not what you're saying. What I'm saying is any future division of this property need to connect to the county system, which is quite a few feet away, but they can come through this process they, they and ask for a variance. ask for a variance, but we're trying to keep the Lowndes County regs 
variance request is for this subject property. Well, this subject property and for one subject use. Right. Well, right. The, she's recommending the condition that it be approved for the use and any future subdivision of this for other development not be given the same variance. But they would have to figure out their own or seek their own variance. Seek their own variance. Yes. I would have liked that scenario. But that's just the recommendation. It's just the recommendation. Even though it's city's city condition, they would have to come back through and get their own merits. Okay, how far is this piece of property? Say this was a, not the city of Valdosta. This is some, but he's going to build something out. So a plant, they're going to build something else there. How far are they from county services right now? How many people? From sewer services? Our services is on 84. Um, I had to guess. But we're requiring this property to bring county water to it. They have to bring county water, not sewer, to it because it is a wastewater treatment plant. But they do have to bring county water from wherever it currently is to here. Yes. But can't point out the map and say, yeah, the, the county water's already been set to this, this location. At the expense of the city? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question actually about that yellow piece that's above it. That's the R1 that we're talking about, the buffering. That's a wetland up there, zone is R1. Um, if that were developed as R1, how would Weathering Lane. Right behind. No. Okay. Because I was seeing this hook to the other side. You can Weathering Lane past landfills. You go straight toward a house that sits under some trees. That's at the upper left okay. corner of the property. Okay. So if it's at the top of the hill, there, it's not well. Right. Correct. Right. It drops off right. real quick. Okay. Any other questions? Any other discussion? I did run over that, um, over the, the revised condition with the applicant, and I believe they are okay with it, but I would have the first piece first. Okay. Is anyone here in support of this application and would like to give us additional information? Hi, I'm Sarah Barnado, and my address is 3998 Inner Road. And I'm speaking on behalf of the City of Valdosta and Jeff Global in favor of this request and um, we understand the conditions that the staff has recommended including the, the modified condition one and we are in agreement with those. Any questions or discussions? Um, I didn't see a layout anywhere in here about kind of where the plan is going on the site and how actually how much acreage it's going to take up. Any, I mean, do you have anything on that? Most of the development, okay. Most of the development is occurring in like southern end of the park. Yeah. Okay. And like that, just taking up that corner. I, I guess what I'm asking is, how much would be left over for future potential sale or redevelopment? I would say at least seventy-five percent, or more than half. Okay. I mean, this is all open. <laughs> Some of it's not even developed. <coughs> the wetlands areas are closed. Right. Right. But the you know, city hall path for also long term thinking of expanding the plan. Okay. Fifty hundred years from now. Based, based on what you're looking at, 75 acres in the yellow line, you probably got 50 acres in that open field. And if they're going to use probably 15, 20 acres for the plant, it still leaves you 35, 40 acres out there for future use by the city or somebody else. A site plan was previously submitted. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Anyone else here in support of this application? 
Is there anyone here in opposition to this request or has questions about what the city of Alabama is requesting? Is there any contact to your office, Carmel? No, sir. Any other discussions before I attempt to entertain a motion? Can I entertain a, a motion on this request? Uh, make a motion that we grant uh, the buffer variance and a motion that we grant the, uh, the connection variance uh, with the condition of the modified condition of the one side. Uh, motion on the floor for Mr. McCall to grant the request as presented for both items with the stipulation that the updated language for the water sewer part be incorporated. Is that correct? Second, anybody? I have second, Ms. Flyler. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed? Are you for or against? I'm sorry, for. Sorry. Unanimous, please. Okay, next case is application VAR 2015-17, Mark Holt for Fairway Outdoor on behalf of Massimo Pistelli. Yes. What is Massimo changing his mind today? <laughs> you all probably recall the variance several months ago, I believe back in June, um, where they wanted to modify an existing billboard that's on the property. Is it one more this is the billboard in question. Um, their previous request involved taking that sign face down, which is about 720 square feet, and replacing it with a 300 some odd square foot back to back digital sign. Um, they took that <coughs> approval to their corporate office, corporate office, rethought it, and came back with a, another idea. This idea this time is to take this one face. That you're, you're seeing, which is about 720 square feet, and to make that into an entire 720 square foot digital space. Um, so that's the request for us today. Um, okay. that, I have a question before you get sure. into this. Okay. What happens to the variance that we have already granted? Should we do something on this in some fashion? Does now that one become null and void? Yes, that variance will be replaced by. Okay, so this, whatever we decide here, mm -hmm. if it's in the positive, would take away what was granted before. Yes. Should this board decide to deny this, the variance that they have in place now still survives. That's correct. Okay, so just want to make sure everybody on the That's correct. Um, staff did have some concerns um, with, with the proposal. Um, we look at North Alaska Road as being a gateway into our community, and no one has seen a billboard 720 square feet. So we're, you know, concerned with the precedent. We're concerned with, you know, the effect it may have on neighboring properties. Um, so the recommendation was for approval, but you have to understand their approval that went forth. Um, the TRC has now changed their policy in making recommendations. <coughs> we're, we're instructed to make our recommendations based on a technical standpoint, such as engineering department, if he doesn't see anything that affects the roads, then he's okay with it, water and sewer, et cetera. Um, however, planning and zoning, because we look at the comp plan, land use, we both had some concerns with the sign of this size um, and just was just concerned about it, you know. So with that, you have your recommendation in your staff report and the applicant is here, um, can shed more light on what they're trying to do and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Did you say that's the only 720 square foot sign of the 
Yeah, there's there. Yeah, the digital that's on that's further south, I should say, on Little Bellows the Road is about half that, it's like 300 some odd square feet. Yeah, that's that's the one where perimeter comes out. Exactly. Hits. Yeah, right there at uh, Battery Source and Pool Store and all that. So we was imagining twice that size. Now, are these generally put at intersections where the be <coughs> stopped at traffic lights? I don't know how the industry, you know, would designate a location based on traffic. I'm not sure. Perhaps Mr. Bar can answer that, that question. But I, I, I looked at it from the standpoint, if you go further west on North Carolina Road, there's the bridge that goes over the, the railroad tracks there. Mm -hmm. And time you tip over that, that bridge, I mean, that's, that's the first thing you're going to see. And that was concerning for me. You know, just the, the light. Well, that's right. Where this, this though, if someone is parked waiting at the light at Old US 41 North, right. they're going to be sitting at the wait light, waiting to turn to the left. There's going to be that giant billboard. Right. That, that's those are the people that they're going to see. And the, so the question is, is it close enough to that that they could see it at 300 feet rather than 700 feet? Does it? Because the one we're sitting in front of her. Yeah. And we're waiting to turn on North Bellows mm -hmm. Road. We're watching that thing go around. And it's a nice board. It is, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. But, but you know, if we were, if you were on North Bellows Road and you're coming to the south, if it was, you know, farther up by uh, the next intersection, you're not going to see, well, maybe they want to have a bigger sign because it's too far away. It's pretty close to the corner. I mean, mom and dad's right, right at that corner. And it'd be news about all stuff in Orange County. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any, are there any trends in nearby counties as uh, liberal size? Uh, that was one of the questions I asked, and there was none. The only location that's near um, is in the Atlanta area, going downtown, where it's mounted, it's a wall mounted unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Established board. Um, our distance requirement is like 500 feet, and I mean, as you can see on the picture, they don't meet that requirement. But I mean, they're allowed to keep what they have because it's non conforming, legal non conforming. But if you start making any modifications, that's where the variance you know, comes into play. Right. They, all of those signs pretty much are grandfathered in as non conforming, pre existing ULDC. But when you modify them for digital, that's where the variance comes in. Yes. Yeah. If you start changing the sign and it kicks in the ULDC, they can maintain it, they can repair it, but they can't enlarge it, they can't alter it. They can't alter it. Okay, any other questions or discussions? Is anyone here? On behalf, would like to give us any additional information. Yes, I'm Bart Holt from Fairway Outdoor, 369 Enterprise Guide, Georgia. Um, as Carmelo said, this is a gateway into Vyrosta. And we were presenting this to our CEO and to our corporate office. They seen this as a gateway into Vyrosta and seeing this as a gateway sign that, you know, does look very good at that size coming in. It does sit at a red light, and yes, we do try to put these billboards at red lights. You know, when the traffic is stopped or slow going through. Uh, the state requirements on these digital billboards are that they do not change, there's no motion. Every 10 seconds is how often it changes. And if you've noticed the one at the pool store, which is ours also, <coughs> and is the uh, new technology, it actually looks like a vinyl, just very clean, very crisp. You don't see motion. You don't really see the light projecting from it. It's just a clean, crisp picture that you see. 
uh, these, as far as the seeing it from the hill, the brightness, these boards do not project that way. Uh, during the daylight, they are brighter because you have the sun out. At night, they run at actually 10 percent of what they usually run during the day. So it dims down considerably. Um, as we told Carmela when we were approaching her about this, this being seen as a gateway sign, it's something that, yeah, we want to advertise on, but it's also something that we would like the county to utilize, the city to utilize, to, you know, to promote any kind of thing they may have going on. All our digital billboards are <coughs> Amber Alert, you know, where the Amber Alert systems take over. Uh, any kind of weather <coughs> system, the emergency management systems will take over, and also the police department, the sheriff's department can take them over at any time to alert the public. Okay. Anything else? That's all that. Any questions? Approximately how many clients would you consider to be on the on the board program? What we offer our clients is on each of these digital boards there are eight ten second advertisements. Yeah. And they, they're out there for 10 seconds and they rotate to the Did you say there's 10% less brightness on the digital at night as opposed to a regular billboard? No, what I was saying is when you see a digital during the daylight, when you see it at night, it's running 90% less, actually only 10% what it does during the day. They reduce us right. the brightness that much. What does this compare to with a regular sun like it is now with lights? You know, I, I couldn't tell you what it would compare to. I can tell you that, you know, on a, a regular billboard, the lights are directed back towards the face. I can tell you, and you've probably seen some of these smaller uh, digitals that they put on premise, they don't control the brightness, and some of those, when you run by, if it's at night or when it's actually a little bit foggy, you're almost blind to see them. You, you won't see that on these, on any of these boards. Um, well, my, my thoughts about it, though, is that advertising size they do what they're designed to do to catch one's attention. You know, whether you're coming down the bridge or whether you're coming from around the corner. Um, my biggest concern is a board that big about around a residential neighborhood, they have to be there more often than, than most. So my only <clears> concern <throat> is would this be a problem a board that size? You know, and and it, well, and as opposed to, to uh, one half the size of digital board, and you have one that's going to be 720 square feet, um, and we never seen that. So as far as someone saying, "Hey, uh, I seen one on perimeter," and they didn't have a problem with, it. we just we just don't know. Um, I do know though, it would probably most likely work better at an intersection closer to the interstate. But this is the busiest one close to the interstate. Well, not uh, Coleman Road and uh, no other road. Okay. You see, but right there, that's that's right near the Foxborough or something. Right. I just want you know, but let's keep that in mind. Okay. Any other questions? Any discussion? I'm I'm, I'm sorry. Just for clarification purposes, you're you're requesting that <coughs> this side be digital. And what would happen to the other side? It would remain the same, what it is now, just steady faces. Okay. And, and this, this face here is actually already what the state would consider a multi message. It's, it's a, one of the turning, rotating signs. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, right now, 
the advertising that's on there, then I believe so we just wrap the whole mechanism. But it was the old technology that would have three different advertisers on it and rotate. So it, it's always been multi-message at that side. It's just a matter of so that side that we're looking at right now is has three advertisers. Well, it, it has the the faces to advertise three faces. Okay. But the uh, okay. South Georgia Credit Union wanted to all three, and so they just wrapped the whole thing okay. and keep it looking. But it is the, the older multi message technology. Okay. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Anyone else here in support? Thank you, sir. Will there be any contact to your office by mail? No, sir. Okay. Any questions? Any discussions? You want to talk about it before we move on? And I try to get a motion. Opposition to this request or have a question about what's being requested. Okay. Okay. I did I jumped to the conclusion that nobody else was here. Can you please pardon me? Okay. Anybody willing to give a motion on this request? Oh, I will. I will. I make a motion to deny. I second the motion. Uh, we have a motion on the floor from. Gretchen to deny. I have second on the floor. All opposed, I mean, all in agreement with the motion. Please raise a hand. All opposed. Do not vote. I was with the first person. Oh, okay. So we have four two then. No, I just, I'm abstaining. Four and two to one. Uh, no, there's only six up here. There's only six votes. One, two, three, four, 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 one, one. Yeah, four, one, one. Okay. Please make it work. Tell Massimo, do what he was going to do the first time, I guess. Thank you all so much. All right, next case we'll call is County Case VAR 2015-18, Jacqueline Petty. Yes, Six, I'm sorry, 6333 Dove Drive, Valhalla. Our last case, uh, County Case, is uh, a variance to our design standards. The property is located in the southeastern part of Mount County, formerly the country state subdivision. This is a subdivision that's been in place since the 80s, early 80s. Um, prior to the OVC, the zoning of this subdivision was MH Mobile Home Subdivision, which allowed all housing types, single wise, double wise, site built homes. Under the doctrine of the UODC, R10 zoning was replaced, replaced the MH zoning, <coughs> and we adopted design standards for R10 zoning. The situation is Ms. Pettit um, lost her double wide um, due to a fire and she would like to replace that home with a single lot. Um, you just canvassed the area. There are a mixture of housing types in this area, which she's proposing is not of scale. Staff is recommending approval of this request. Bless her she has pneumonia, so. <laughs> you should do the three in a row. <laughs> and um, we, we support her request. Okay, any questions, any discussions? Is anyone here in support? Would you like to make any kind of statement? No. Okay. Please let the record show that she is here for the record and has nothing else to add at this time, but reserve the right if she needs to at a later time. Is anyone here in opposition to this request? Anybody have a question about what is being requested? Is there any contact with your office or no? No, sir. Okay, anybody got any questions? Anybody want to talk about it for a minute? Can I get a motion on this request? I make a motion to approve as requested. I have 
motion from Ms. Hobby, Hobby, I'm sorry, to grant the request as presented, citing criteria to see. Do I have a second? I have multiple seconds. <laughs> I think that is perfect. <laughs> All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous, good luck with it, man. Thank you. Sorry you had to wait so long. Okay, next case, City of Aldosta case, application 2015-10, Richard Hill, 200 South Patterson Street. Matt, it's your show now. Yes, sir. I'm going to sit here so I can push the buttons. Mr. Chairman, I'll try and be brief with this one in your packet. You have quite a bit of information. These maps and site plans, this is the barn drugstore property. It's in the downtown area on Savannah Avenue in South Patterson. It has been there for a long time. It is on the CD. Thank you. The applicant is yes, proposing to leave the building basically alone and build expansions, but alter the site to install a drive through lane for the pharmacy as a pickup. Uh, based on the existing conditions of the building, there really is no other place to put a drive through here except where it's being proposed, which is along the east side of the building. Here's a site plan, which is also in the packet. You can see it differs from the existing parking lot. Currently, we have a building and a sidewalk and a pretty wide parking area. And we're proposing to work into that design, the drive through lane, and still have parking. Uh, one of the benefits of CD zoning is parking is not required, so they could give up a whole bunch of parking spaces and not for those problems. Uh, we don't have to worry about landscaping requirements and impervious service requirements and things like that. The only thing that's really incumbent upon them in this case is the number of stacking spaces for a drive through um, Currently, six spaces are required from the pickup of the back. Um, that standard was written generally with restaurants in mind. Um, you may recall in the past few years we've had similar requests for other pharmacies that have sought relief from that standard. They are asking the same. They're requesting four instead of six. Um, the interesting part of this is to maximize it out to four, which is the most they can physically fit there, the fourth car has to be on the county health department property to the south, which they have received permission to do that, and also have the driveway come directly in from the county lot. Um, it eats up a couple parking spaces on the county property, which the county is okay with as well, so it sort of works. The other thing that's listed in your packet is a reduction by one foot the depth of the parking space, trying to get everything to fit in here, they are one foot short for meeting the code requirement. So they're requesting at least one row of their parking space to be 18 feet deep instead of the code requirement of 19. And a footnote to that is staff is actually contemplating amendments to the LDR to make the minimum requirement 18 feet anyway. Um, so staff is recommending approval of both of these variances based on the site plan and I believe also the condition that it be approved for a pharmacy use only. The purpose of that, Mr. Chairman, is so this variance is not carried over to some future commercial use, such as perhaps a restaurant. Oh, come on, man. That's real changing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any questions for Matt at this point in the discussion? Yes, ma'am. One question. The animals parking, would they only It's um, 90 degree parking, right. and they're not proposing angle parking. Okay. Um, and okay. it's because the site has limited access, and that was one idea I think that's been toyed with. But with one foot short, it's not necessary. The curving will stay. The curve would stay, right? The sidewalk, everything on South Carolina must stay, stay that state right away. This is all within private property. It's just a little bit snug. Any other questions? Any discussions? Is anyone here in support? Mr. Hill, would you like to? I would take just a moment, sir. Richard Hill, Richard Hill and Associates, 2314 Davis Road. We're the architect on the project. And as you can see from the interior of the building, uh, we're moving the pharmacy about 40 feet from where it is now to that outside wall to uh, 
when there will be new regulations on pharmacies to impose it more tightly than it is. And this will benefit uh, Mr. Charlie Barnes and his staff to upgrade from the health care and I'm here on the behalf. So <coughs> we have to answer any questions. You can see the stack zone. We've got three on the property. The fourth is, is uh, on the county property of the health center. Uh, they've given they've been in the loop all the way through the through the all the changes. I have, I have a question. Go ahead. Will the, the stacking backing up onto the health department property interfere with cross traffic within the parking lot if there are four deep there? There is no cross traffic because the <clears throat> the health department has put up a chain there. Right. And that That's is where it'll be. the employee parking behind the chain and they can't come in from the back. So that if if that are if this is an extremely low frequency as you probably can see it, most of the other pharmacies around town, most of you ever have one or two cars and there's not like a fast food store. But the ability is is if, if there are four there, the, the individual just makes the loop in the uh, parking lot of the health department comes back and they can come through if it has not cleared it by then and park and walk in. It, it, this is not a dead end situation. There's plenty of maneuvering room to, to come back around. It's in the area you can kind of see where the parking is provisioned off. First point, second rated. What we've got here is there's an eight foot sidewalk right there. And what we're doing is taking that eight foot sidewalk out. This is an extra wide drive. And we're just moving those parking spaces back about three feet and put it in the drive through put that sidewalk in the same. Thank you for keeping the truth. <laughs> number one, number one criteria, we'll stay there. Okay, any questions, any discussions? Anyone else here in support? Anyone here in opposition or have questions about what is being requested? Any contact to your office concerning this? Yes, sir, no contact. Any other discussions or questions from the panel? Can I entertain a motion on this request? I make a motion that we approve the variance request as recommended by staff. I have a motion from Ms. Plyler to grant the request as presented with any recommendation from staff. Yeah. Uh, second. Second. I have second. All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it, Mr. Hill. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes. I was not here. I read them, but didn't see anything that was out of whack. Did anybody else see anything? Okay, there was one little typographical error in the scope of the spell check. Uh, cable. It was missing an E on the cable. On page. Four. Okay. Near the top of the page. It says tablet. We'll find it. Okay. Anything else? Okay. okay. I have a motion to accept with uh, correction. Do I have a second? I have a second from Nancy. All in favor, raise a hand. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion items, name, badges, slash, IDs. Nothing to report. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about? New business, old business? We need to take our little posse, though. Last month you said we don't need to bring the posse anymore. <laughs> okay, uh, if there's no further discussion, we are adjourned. Thank you very much for your time. We apologize for making the meeting a free. <laughs>